howdy and welcome to Dakota Cowboy here on Beck TV presented by Dakota Community Bank and Trust. I'm Wild Bill. I'm the media director here at the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame in historic Medora. Hope you can come see us. You know, September weather in North Dakota is really underrated. We're outside on a beautiful September day and that temperature is working on us. There's a few clouds in the sky. It is just gorgeous and the colors of the Badlands reflect that. Come and see us and when you do, be sure to stop in here at the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame as we remain open seven days a week, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. We would love to see you. We sure hope you enjoyed NDRA Rodeo Action this season here on Beck TV. Congratulations to all the year-end winners and we look forward to 2024, Beck TV and the North Dakota Rodeo Association. It's been a fun year and we look forward to more. And again, congratulations and thank you for watching each and every uh, rodeo that's uh, been carried here on Beck TV. Well, coming up on the program today, Tisa Peak was at the Mandan Youth Days Rodeo in uh, Mandan at the Dale Palkey Arena. She talked to a couple of young athletes there and we'll have a clip from uh, the North Dakota State Fair too, which has a tie to this week's Dakota Cowboy Student Rodeo Athlete of the Week. I think you're really gonna enjoy what Tisa found out at uh, the Mandan Youth Days Rodeo as well as uh, the North Dakota State Fair. Gonna see some good looking cattle. Trust me, that'll be coming up on today's Dakota Cowboy. Meanwhile, I was in Canton, South Dakota this summer and I talked to a friend of mine. His name is Phil Swanson, and he and his son Dylan have a uh, stock contract, uh, contracting business where they raise bucking bulls and good ones at that. You'll meet the boys from Raise Em Rank today on Dakota Cowboy. It's a great segment. They've got a wonderful facility. They've got some great bucking bulls. You're gonna enjoy that piece here on Dakota Cowboy. And then later, we'll bring you the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame Hall of Honorees Inductee of the Week, the Schnell family. That name is very prevalent in North Dakota and beyond as a lot of people put their trust in marketing their livestock to the name Schnell. And Ray Schnell was inducted in the year 2000, and he is our North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame Hall of Honorees Inductee of the Week. And from Tisa's segment to the Dakota Cowboy Student Rodeo Athlete of the Week, there is a liaison there. And uh, you'll find out more if you stick around. So what you need to do right now is call up the neighbors and tell them to turn on Beck TV because Dakota Cowboy started just a few minutes ago. And we'll be right back on today's Dakota Cowboy presented by Dakota Community Bank and Trust. Man has worked in sync with Mother Nature since the beginning of time. Relying on her to provide sufficient moisture every growing season is a roll of the dice. You can now insure your pastures and rangelands with Rainfall Index Policy available from Chamley Financial. This will give you the peace of mind by knowing you will be protected from the adverse effects of Mother Nature. Contact Chamley Financial today, 719-338-3428 or go to Chamley Financial Stop out to our facility, Highway 22 South, let us build a truck for you. Unique gifts and assortment of beautiful jewelry and much more can be found at Dakota Territory Jewelry and Gifts in Medora. Montana silver necklaces and earrings, Black Hills gold and sterling silver jewelry, many Native American made pieces too, and a selection of art pieces. They carry healthy products made right here in North Dakota and to satisfy your sweet tooth, fall in love with the best fudge around and the freshest taffy made right in the store. Buy it by the pound in a variety of flavors. Dakota Territory Jewelry and Gifts in Historic Medora. Wild Bill here for Steffes and Selinger Chiropractic of Dickinson. Recently, I tore my meniscus, and after an MRI, doctors gave me three options. Prescription meds, reoccurring injections, or surgery, which wasn't guaranteed to rid me of the pain. Then someone suggested I try soft wave therapy. Steffes and Selinger Chiropractic of Dickinson are skilled in this innovative treatment. After a few treatments, my pain went from an 8 down to a 1. See if soft wave therapy is right for you. Contact Steffes and Selinger Chiropractic today.
Whether you have guns, ammo, vehicles, toys, or collectibles, can sign with Last Chance Auction and we can help put money in your pocket. Give us a call at 334-SOLD or visit lastchancesd.com for upcoming auctions. Hi, Rich from Law Motors. 45 years ago, Dad started selling cars. 35 years ago, I started selling cars. And 15 years ago, Tyler started selling cars. And I'm mom, and I told all of them, just be nice. JR's Auto Body and Truck Collision has built a reputation as one of the most reputable and reliable body shops in this region. With nearly 30 years in business, customers count on JR's to get it done right the first time. They'll work with your insurance company to smoothen the process. From their 40-foot frame straightening machine, Sickens Paint, and the latest technology in the repair industry, they're the only name you need to know. For auto, semi, RV, and trailer repair, it's JR's Auto Body and Truck Collision. North Dickinson, call 701-483-6778. JR's Auto Body and Truck Collision. Welcome back to Dakota Cowboy on Beck TV, presented by Dakota Community Bank and Trust. We are here at the Dale Polky Arena at the Mandan Horse and Saddle Club Youth Rodeo, and I'm joined with Chesney Germanson, Miss High School Rodeo North Dakota, and multiple event competitor. Chesney, can you just explain how you started out in the Mandan Horse and Saddle Club and what you think of this arena? Uh, this new arena is awesome. I really like it. In 2020 was the first time I competed in the Mandan Horse and Saddle Club. It was the first rodeo I competed in after COVID and they asked me to bring goats. So I saw a contract the goats for the Mandan Horse and Saddle Club rodeos and I also compete in breakaway roping, barrel racing, goat tying, pole bending. That's right. And you, um, also got that title of Miss High School Rodeo North Dakota as you were competing at the state finals in all those events. Yes, at state finals I also competed in the cow cutting. I, in high, For the high school I was reserve champion in the cow cutting and the goat tying and also will be competing at nationals as Miss North Dakota High School Rodeo. Awesome, what are you doing to prepare for that? There are a lot of outfits I have been getting ready together and I also study the rule book and so I know answers for, we have a written test and they might, might ask me questions in personal interview that I should study for and I'm just really excited to go and be myself. Do you think doing all these events and like being part of something like the Mandan Horse and Saddle Club helped you be a better queen? Oh, definitely. I think it is very good for queens to be involved. They know more about what is going on and can help out and be more involved as a queen if they're involved as a competitor as well. So you're doing all these events and you're a cowgirl in Marshall, North Dakota. Is there anything you do at school? I'm just assuming you're as involved. Yes, I am actually homeschooled. I do online, but I play basketball and participate in band for, at Richardson Taylor Public School. And I play piano, so I play piano at church once in a while for an accompany. That is wonderful. I had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you see all these little peewees out there on the ponies and everything at these youth, youth organizations for rodeos across the state, what could you tell future competitors? You know, you started out from the ground up. What, what advice would you give them? to keep going with it. I mean, if you love it, you're gonna keep going. And I think that it's just really fun and it teaches you a lot of life lessons. Even if you happen to not keep going once you get older, it teaches you a lot of life lessons for whatever you do in life. That's for sure. Well, this cowgirl even has a broken toe and still competes. And she's going to represent us so well. I'm so proud of you, Chesney. And thank you so much for taking your time today at Mandan Horse and Saddle Club. Thank you, Tisa. We are with Miss Frankie Call at the Mandan Horse and Saddle Club. And this is not your first rodeo, is it, Frankie? No. Nope. You want to tell me when you got started here in Mandan? Um, last year. Last year? Uh-huh. And what did you think about it? I liked it a lot. What events do you do here? I do poles, keyhole, barrels, dummy roping, and barrels. Do you do all that on this pony? Mm -hmm. And what was your pony's name? Renegade. Renegade. I love it. Mm -hmm. So um, what happened today? How was your runs today? It was good. Was it good? Did you win some prizes? No. What do you do when you're at home with Renegade practicing? I ride around in my arena and go out in the hills and the high 
You do? So you stay pretty busy doing that? Yeah. What school do you go to? Old Red Trail. Old Red Trail? Oh. What grade are you in? <laughs> Red Trail Elementary. Oh, that's okay. I get it. What, what grade are you in? First. Are I'm you going into second grade. Going into second grade? Do you talk about horses a lot at school? Mm, kind of. I talk about them, kind of. Not that much, but I talk about them. Well, I can tell you love, love them. I've been seeing you ride Renegade around all day. So um, I have one last question. What do you think of this new arena in Mandan? I like it a lot. It's a good arena. Was the ground pretty good today? Yeah. Okay. Will you keep being a cowgirl, you and Renegade? Okay. okay. We are in the Shell Barns at the North Dakota State Fair, and I'm with the reserve brand champion, and Spidey Hennessy. Can you tell us about your show this week at the fair and what it takes to prepare these cattle? Well, it takes a lot of work to get these cattle right and big and just looking good. And it's not just me that does the work, it's my brothers, my family, and my dad mostly, and he's helped a lot. And it's, Come a long ways with these two heifers here. We're gonna go on to a couple shows and be what pretty busy. Did you go to? Oh, we went to Valley City, the winter show there, and then we went down to Rapid City for the Junior Nationals, and Women's E Nationals there, and then there's been multiple that I just can't really think about right now. This is kind of old. Okay, so. When you're preparing these cattle, when does it start? Is it January 1 or is it the minute they're born? No, it's about read They're about yep. one or so yearlings. When they're yearlings? Yeah, and then they start like halt breaking them in and then getting them used to people. And then once they get, I don't know, a year and a half, and then we start working on them, like washing them every day and pulling them out and just taking them to shows. And, and they just keep getting older. And, Build more shows and also become cow, you kick them out of the pasture, here, and raise more cows. So going to more shows, you've been going to cattle shows since you were in diapers? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So when was the first cow show you won that you can remember here? I don't even know. Where's... I might have to ask your mom again. Yeah, probably. It was probably three or four years ago. Oh, so when you're sowing these cows in the arena and you're taking care of them at 95 degree weather and at the North Dakota State Fair, does anything change for it? Well, the heat actually affects it all. They get so hot, and like how they have so much hair here. Mm -hmm. They they like to say cold. We try to keep them as cold as possible with the fans and all that, and it makes it kind of worse because they get all soggy and soft. And, and you have to pluck that hair. Yep, and yeah. That. And yeah. So how about the feed program that it takes to have these cattle look this good at home? That's mostly my dad's part. He does all that. I'm not really sure. It's just a bunch of feed that, I don't know. That and, what, and consistent. Yeah. And so okay. relating the rodeo, Sutton's quite the bulldogger in the North Dakota High School Rodeo and the amateur rodeo associations across the state. Yeah. So I've been watching these show guys all, all week. It's been a short yeah. so far, but I see the work it involves. And it is similar to hauling a horse down the road in rodeo. So what can you say about this work compared to going to rodeos? This one, each cattle show you go to, they're at different times, so you gotta wake up way earlier. And it's kind of a pain, but fun getting around and meeting new people though. Cause... That's for sure. You know people from oh, yeah. Denver, the tent yeah. was? Yeah. Okay, and then there's also genetics. So you said it happened, starts at the yearly. But your mom and dad have been in the show business as yeah. core, hobbling for by decades or more longer. Yeah. And then you combine that with the team. They have their genetics down mm -hmm. to a science. Your dad knows what he's going to buy all the yeah. right? Yeah. So. I'm, again, I'm not included with that stuff. That's all my parents and my brother, Fletcher. That's all him. I just, I just work on them. Did you sit down and yeah. you did a mighty fine job. Thank you. Hey, what have been some of your favorite memories at the North Dakota State Phillies? Even if they were bad. I don't know if I can say that, though. <laughs> okay. Well, it's not for camera. But to call a cowboy, we do have a real cowboy here. In and out of the arena, in the barn, out of the barn, Mr. Sutton Hennessy. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll be back with more than quote a cowboy. Sitting by the fireplace doing nothing is still doing something. Share the memories with a new fireplace from Keller Hearth and Home and Heat and Glow. No one builds a better fire.
From sleek to modern design, we sell warmth, comfort, beauty, and relaxation. Find the right style for your life along with smart control options. With over 50 burning models on display. Visit our showroom today, Keller Hearth and Home in Heat and Glow, on the Strip Mandan and North Dickinson, where every day is a home show. Hi, my name is Jeff Gould. I have a story called America's Story. I'm going to be doing it Valley City on October 20th. It's the East Greets West North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame fundraiser, and I hope you can make it. It's going to be a great time. We'll begin at 5 p.m. on October 20th with a social dinner and a lively auction right after Jeff Gould presents America's Story. Tickets available now at NorthDakotaCowboy.org. East Greets West with the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame October 20th at the Valley City North Dakota Eagles Club. The dictionary defines community as a group of people living in the same place or sharing common goals. Community is the largest part of our name and we make it the largest part of our business. We support our local schools, organizations, youth programs, and local events from Bowman to Bismarck because we all share a common goal to better the quality of life in our communities. Come bank with us at Dakota Community Bank and Trust, your real community bank. Medora Boot and Western Wear open year-round in historic Medora. You'll find quality items for cowboys and cowgirls of all ages. Medora Boot and Western Wear has over 1,500 pair of boots on hand at all times. New this year, the R. Watson brand of boot featuring an all-leather heel, riveted shank, and a 10-iron leather sole. Jeans, shirts, hats, caps, and more, and customer service is number one. Medora Boot and Western Wear in historic Medora. Medora Boot and Western Wear. Securian Financial Advisors of North Dakota is now Lux Wealth Advisors. In our current climate, planning for retirement can be scary. Let the experienced advisors at Lux Wealth Advisors take the worry out of wealth planning. Lux Wealth Advisors can work with anyone, from those looking to invest their first dollar to those transitioning into retirement. Let Lux Wealth Advisors be your guide. Lux Wealth Advisors, new name, same great service. Hello and welcome to the MHA Interpretive Center. It's the perfect stop along the Lewis and Clark Trail and the cultural hub of the Mandan, Hidaadza, and Arikara Nation. Nestled along the shores of Lake Sagaguia in Newtown, North Dakota, one mile west of the Four Bears Casino. You can enjoy amphitheater performances, art exhibitions, and educational workshops utilizing our Living Cultural Center. Enjoy some coffee, browse our gift shop, and learn about the original people of this land. Learn more at mhanation.com slash interpretive center. And welcome back to Dakota Cowboy here on Beck TV. We're presented by Dakota Community Bank and Trust. Dale Polk and his team are anxious to see you. Stop by any of the branches that they're located in across the great state of North Dakota, and they will take care of all your loan needs, any banking needs you have, any advice that you might be looking for, they've got it for you at Dakota Community Bank and Trust. We're here in beautiful southeastern South Dakota, Canton to be exact, and uh, visiting with a longtime buddy of mine, Phil Swanson. Good to see you, my <laughs> you friend. You too, my friend. Old bull rider from way back, yeah, huh? Yeah, long time ago. <laughs> and this is his son, Dylan. Dylan nice Swanson, thanks for having us out today. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. It. All right, Phil, uh, you know, driving down here, thinking about things and uh, how you and I got to be friends and stuff back in the early 90s. Uh, you used to listen to me on the radio and I used to be quite adamant about uh, rodeo and bull ridings and things and you called me up one day and we started visiting and you told me about something called bull riders only do you recall that yeah that's when i was going to the bro's and <clears throat> you know kind of winding down my career but uh-huh uh that's yeah that's been a long time ago but i remember a conversation that we had that you said you should see these productions they're actually playing rock music Yep. as the bulls are bucking and I thought wow that just makes too dang much sense yep. <laughs> so when was the last time you got on a bull uh it's been I was 40 years old so it'd be 20 almost 22 years ago physically but in your head once oh uh, last night yeah I want to get back on but Dylan said I got to lose 40 pounds. 40 so pounds. Well, I got 30 to go. Oh, 30 yeah. to go. Okay. That, <laughs> was as, that, was, that was as of last night, too. Yeah. Maybe 31 today. Huh? Yeah. Uh, your day job, you worked a long, you've been working a long time for a local beer distributor. Yep, and, worked uh, for Budweiser in Sioux Falls and uh, spend a lot of time out here. Yeah. You know, my family farms out here and Dylan's got 
my whole you know old place here and mm -hmm. and uh, between Canton and and where we live now and here just a uh, good place for my grandkids to grow up I like, I like coming out here and watching them yeah um, who planted the seed raise them raise them rank productions raise them rank rodeo was that Dylan Swanson raise them rank yeah what uh, you, you used to ride you rode bulls right briefly yeah I think I got on my first bull when I was about eight which would have been when he got on his last bull I got on my first bull and then I didn't get on anything till college I rode it a little bit in college um, so I had like a real late start at it and it was just kind of I never really accomplished what I wanted to in that and uh, really wanted to get into raising them you know I got a good job out of college and started raising a family but really wanted to raise bucking bulls so I think the first cow I bought I all I had was an f-150 pickup truck and a bumper pull horse trailer and I started with run rodeo, one rodeo cow and then from there I bought a couple sets um, from some guys that had some really deep page genetics and that's really what kind of what started it you know there. we all uh, to be successful in this sport of rodeo whether producing riding competing whatever you got to find out where you fit in and where you're most comfortable at and yeah. you felt your 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 expertise was better served as raising these bucking bulls this bucking bull program you got yeah i i just i've always been drawn to them um the rough stock the bulls you know i've got a couple kids running around now too and at one point i was kind of the rodeo rat following him around and uh yeah i just couldn't let it go so started raising them um before we had some of our own bulls that were big enough to buck we'd bring in sets of steers or when once we get this arena built and invite guys out to come try it and practice and we'd buy some practice pen bulls from a few guys and and just kind of host a couple small things here and then as our breeding program started to kind of build and we were able to keep back more of the ones we raised you know now we've turned it into you know more of the event production and, and putting on our own shows and, and been our own rodeos and things but yeah i learned really really quick that as much as i like raising bucking bulls I, I like seeing the next generation of bull riders kind of advance and find their spot too so um we we put a lot of time and effort into the youth in the sport too we do a youth series where we've got kids from six years old to 16 that compete on miniature bucking bulls um really trying to start them off on the right caliber of stock at the right age and then build them progressively into what our open pentables is and and you know try to give them the tools needed to succeed and make a career out of it rather than just dumping them in two seconds it's hard to put on a bull riding if you don't have bull riders so we need both what he just said about you know bringing the young up uh, up and coming bull riders together wouldn't that be something that pete Longbreak would have said wouldn't that be something that jim sutton would have said too i mean uh, it seems to be like i said you got to figure out where you fit into this rodeo game and uh you got to be proud of this guy oh i'm very proud of dylan what what he's done with the raise and rank series <clears throat> just getting you know he's also one of the wrestling coaches in canton and i have another son that's one of the head coaches down in canton but it's just it's really about the kids and and not so much uh you know making them better wrestlers we are and we want to make them better bull riders but we really want to make them better men you What's know What's the liaison between training a wrestler and training a bull rider? What's the common things? What's different? Obviously, the difference are obvious, but what about the mindset? Yeah, so a lot of the mindset is honestly the same. The biggest difference is at the beginning of the day, you step on a scale at a wrestling tournament and you're going to weigh the same as your opponent. You know, when you get into riding bulls, it's, it's the true David versus Goliath. So it's so much more of a mental game. But, you know, you look at the amount of talent east river south dakota um the amount of athletic ability east river south dakota and kind of in the surrounding states where we're at it's there in spades and i see it coaching youth wrestling but there's a lot of these kids that just didn't grow up on a third generation farm you know their dad didn't ride bulls you know they're not from fort pier or from Belfouche, and you know it was just in the family you know so they've just never been introduced to it so mm -hmm. a big part of what we're trying to accomplish is just give an opportunity you know showing them the door they're the one that's got to kind of kick kick it open and and see if there's something behind it but um yeah i mean it's just it's been a blast you know just allowing kids the opportunity to, to try it and um at the same time you know our breeding program is you know we're finally kind of getting to the point where we can keep a lot more of our own stuff back and i don't have to sell as many calves and things like that so i i i really i love hauling bulls but i really love hauling a load of bulls that we raised and I could tell you 
where they were born and you see the process and the progress that goes into like Pete that long work. break and Jim Sutton. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tell us about your breeding program. Tell us about your 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 uh, ones that you're most proud of and the ones that you can't wait to see them not on. Yeah, I mean, I hope hopefully the best ones are yet to come. Uh, I started like the first breed bull I bought was a backlash son of a mudslinger daughter that I brought off of Hayden Shaw mm -hmm. um, and a set of 10 cows and very heavy page bred, you know, so I, I bred to him for a few years and, and we've got a good pen of rodeo bulls out of that bull. Um, I've got some cows that I kept back from him. Um, a couple years later, I bought a set of 20 cows and, and they were all exposed to a bull called Z18 Little Brute. Um, he'd be an I'm a gangster son out of the dam to, to uh, Brutus. And I've loved the calves that, that we got out of him. I, I also, around that same time, bought a yearling bull from the same guy that would be, um, he was an Oyster Creek son. Mm -hmm. And so that goes back to showtime and kind of some of those bloodlines. And so the, the set of two-year-olds I have right now and the set of yearlings that I've got out of him um are all really showing a lot of progress and their promise i should say and mm -hmm. i've got one i raised actually turned out on some heifers right now so i'm kind of excited to see that'll be the first when they start when that set of heifers starts calving next year that'll be the first set out of cows i raised in a breed bull that i raised and, and he's out of a hustler daughter and and uh so that's uh that's i'm pretty excited about that it's a lot of pride into unloading a set of bulls that that you raised and did all the work on you know about how many events do you get to a year um, there's, there's a short handful that people just kind of have us bring the bulls to. Um, I put on the SGRA rodeo down in Irene, South Dakota. We've, we've done, last year I did an SGRA rodeo in Sioux Falls. We do a really, really neat bull riding in, in Harrisburg, South Dakota at an apple orchard. We've done one at wedding venues. Um, our finals for the second year in a row now will be in Mitchell inside the Corn Palace. So we'll turn that basketball court into a rodeo arena, which I don't know. I got a thing with basketball courts. If there's not a wrestling mat or a roadie arena on them, I don't really care to be in one. So <laughs> we'll we'll find a way to make them look better one way or another. And so we'll uh, we'll be going back there. Um, yeah, and just you know looking for new opportunities to to bid. I I I love the classic you know SGRA rodeo down in Irene where it's you know beautiful setting and it's it's like stepping back in time. You know that's been going on for 30 years. It was the anniversary of this year, but then I I really get a kick out of putting a bull riding on in, a, in an area or a venue where you would not expect to see it you know so when you've got it set up and people are driving by you bring in a whole new group of people who don't know what it is that you're doing and and they might not be fans when they show up but hopefully they're fans when they leave okay um any events that you want to get to any goals that uh, you would like to share oh yeah them? you know we were just we were just talking because there's actually um some bulls that not ones i raised but we had picked up on on some smaller kind of deals and then they'd you know I'd, I'd sold those bulls and, and one of them had a pretty good trip in Cheyenne here just recently and uh, my boys are watching those videos and they've seen you know the tribute to Lane Frost videos oh, so okay. they've seen those so they know what the daddy of them all is and they're like oh we can go there and I said I'd never go there unless I was entered in it and I didn't I wasn't near talented enough to do that and so now it's I'm never going there until I got a set of bulls there so mm -hmm. you know there's obviously the, the big ones that you've kind of got in the back of your mind um, that you'd for sure want to cross off your list someday um but for now i just uh i'm enjoying working with different communities and different committees and and trying to bring something to their town and make it theirs but then also put you know put our brand on it put our stamp on it and and so we'll keep exploring that for now so just the goal is to keep your foot on the gas and see where this thing goes and take it as far as you can with the right attitude and the right yeah. stock and the right mindset yeah, well, one of these one of these years it, it's going to work out it's one of them deals where you just kind of got to bet the farm on it and uh -huh. try to make it work but uh yeah we're hoping so you know we've had our our fair share of hiccups and and that sort of thing too and have to dial back and and just keep persevering but well it's been my experience that in order to be successful a guy's got to step out of his comfort zone and i don't yeah. think you're afraid to do that i think you've already told us in the last five yeah. minutes that uh, you're ri willing to take risks maybe a little bit too much though <laughs> <laughs> oh man wonderful who comes to this arena i mean do you have regular events you got bleachers over here you've got bleachers yeah. over there you got gr a great set of bucking shoots it's a great facility who yeah, uh, appreciate who, who it. comes here 
Uh, well, this is kind of one of them, if you build it, they will come, we kind of hoped type of deals. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it was just, even if I would have had the talent to be as good a bull rider as my dad was and see the venues that he had seen, I really don't like traveling all that much, you okay. know? So it's one of them deals where it's like, hey, we can, we can buck some bulls tonight and I'm about 150 yards from my bed. <laughs> and so we've had some fantastic bull ridings here. And for, for some of them practice pens that we'll do or bull team events, you know, if we advertise for it, um, you know, we'll get, we'll get a big local crowd. I mean, we're close enough to Sioux Falls where if we wanted the crowd here, we could get it. Um, I don't advertise for them as hard anymore. So it's kind of a well-kept secret when we, when we do some of those, just because um, you can't charge admission here and you know I get people wandering through my barns and that kind of thing oh, which yeah. that's yeah. all good and fine and dandy too but when you're trying to put on a bull ride and I'm kind of usually distracted by that but you know we've got a lot of great supporters within this community and family and friends and stuff and so even when we'll just buck calves with the dummy you know we'll have we'll have people come out to watch and and we've had a, a handful of of youth events here. We had Midco Sports Network televise one of them. It oh, was really? just, oh, my. yeah, they, they did a few events for us last year. Um, they did one here was just mini bulls, not even any of our big open bulls. I think that had like 12 or 13,000 people tune in and watch no just, kidding. just for the youth. So that was kind of eye opening. You know, I think there's, there's a market for that. People like to see it. Um, and it was cold. It was early spring and like the weekend before it was nice out and then that day it was raining and cold and I'm sure you remember Scott Lynn, but he was uh oh, yeah. Scott was commentating uh with Midco guys and yeah they they froze that day. But uh yeah, we've done some bull team events. I, I plan to do more of the bull teams and the faturity type things here at the house, but then um, you know, for our bigger productions we've kinda outgrown this area in the parking that you know we can accommodate so you know, on an upcoming uh, segment of Dakota Cowboy in the foreseeable future, you're going to hear a song called Raise Em Rank by a guy named Sequoia. Quickly tell us the, how that came to be. Yeah, I was in Kansas City for my brother's bachelor party. I'm not usually one for crowds, and so I found kind of a quiet place at late at night to get a slice of pizza and started talking to this guy in front of me. Uh, turns out he was a musician. Uh, the next day, he was playing at the Tin Roof Bar, and so we sat and listened to his set and got to chatting with him afterwards a little bit. And he was asking me kind of what does raise and rank mean and that sort of thing. And he's like, man, that'd make a really cool song. So over the next month or so, we kind of started texting back and forth and, and put some lyrics together for a song called Raised Rank and kind of encompasses what it means to us. And um, yeah, we see, we're sure yeah, like it. We're gonna talk to Sequoia about that. That's a, it's an amazing song. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. Anything you'd like to add uh, about your operation, about your dad, about anything, uh, uh, Dylan, uh, before we wrap up here today? Not really. I mean, just, you know, thanks to everybody that supported us, getting us as far as we've come. Um, yeah, still got big dreams and plans for the future, but uh, one step at a time and just keep nodding our head, I guess. Keep an eye on this guy. Keep an eye on this guy, too. <laughs> I, we kind of lost track of each other for a few years, but yep. here we are, you yes, know, sir. And it's, yep. uh, that, uh, you know, our friendship prevailed, so. Yeah, friends are friends forever. You bet, you bet. It's uh, Dylan. Thank you, sir. And Phil Swanson. Yes, sir. Good. Raise them rank. Uh, keep an eye out for that in the foreseeable future. And uh, we appreciate you guys taking the time to join us here today. Yep. Really, yeah. thank you very much. You're welcome. You bet. This is Dakota Cowboy presented by Dakota Community Bank and Trust. We're back in just a jiffy here on Beck TV. Since the beginning of time, people have gathered around a glowing fire to tell their stories. Keep these fires burning with a yodel wood or gas burning stove. Stop in today, Keller Hearth and Home and Yodel Stove on the Strip Mandan in North Dickinson, where every day is a home show. Hi, Rich from Law Motors. 45 years ago, Dad started selling cars. 35 years ago, I started selling cars. And 15 years ago, Tyler started selling cars. And I'm Mom, and I told all of them, just be nice. Ace Flute Trailers of Dickinson is a family-owned dealer with expert staff that know their products front to back. We stock over 150 units of all types and can custom order a trailer with the unique features and capabilities you require for brands you can trust. Our experienced service team is the reason we're also the best place to have your trailer customized or repaired. Count on Base Flute Trailers of Dickinson to keep you hauling. 
Man has worked in sync with Mother Nature since the beginning of time. Relying on her to provide sufficient moisture every growing season is a roll of the dice. You can now insure your pastures and rangelands with rainfall index policy available from Chamley Financial. This will give you the peace of mind by knowing you will be protected from the adverse effects of Mother Nature. Contact Chamley Financial today, 719-338-3428 or go to Chamley Financial. JR's Auto Body and Truck Collision has built a reputation as one of the most reputable and reliable body shops in this region. With nearly 30 years in business, customers count on JR's to get it done right the first time. They'll work with your insurance company to smoothen the process. From their 40-foot frame straightening machine, Sickens Paint, and the latest technology in the repair industry, they're the only name you need to know. For auto, semi, RV, and trailer repair, it's JR's Auto Body and Truck Collision. North Dickinson, call 701-483-6778. JR's Auto body and truck collision whether you have guns ammo vehicles toys or collectibles can sign with last chance auction and we can help put money in your pocket give us a call at 334 sold or visit lastchancesd.com for upcoming auctions for more than 70 years farmers and ranchers have relied on dickinson ready mix for all their concrete needs whether it's a shop building for machinery storage or paved feedlots for your livestock, grain bins for on-site grain storage, or precast pads for automatic cattle waterers, Dickinson Ready Mix has been there. To provide quality concrete for all your agricultural structures and infrastructure. For your next project, call Dickinson Ready Mix to discuss the benefits that concrete can add to your operation. Since the beginning of time, people have gathered around a glowing fire to tell their stories. Keep these fires burning with a Yodel wood or gas burning stove. Stop in today, Keller Hearth and Home and Yodel Stove on the Strip Mandan in North Dickinson, where every day is a home show. Hey, we're looking for ideas for our next commercial. Stocks? We have a fully stocked lot. Cars, trucks, SUVs? Clearly. We strive for honesty, transparency, and a better buying experience. Of course we do. Guys, think everybody's busy. Nobody has time to spend hours shopping for a car has to be simple, easy. Sales, service, simplify. Perfect. Torgerson Auto Center, East Bismarck Expressway. Sales, service, simplified. Welcome back to Dakota Cowboy here on Beck TV, presented by Dakota Community Bank and Trust. We are here in the great Hall of Honorees at the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame on the second floor. And getting ready to tell you about this week's North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame Hall of Honorees Inductee of the Week. This segment is brought to you each week by our friends at Torgerson Auto Center on East Bismarck Expressway in Bismarck. If you're looking for a specific vehicle, one that not only fits your needs but also fits your budget, get a hold of the staff at Torgerson Auto Center and they'll be pleased to help you out. Torgerson Auto Center bringing you the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame Hall of Honorees Inductee of the Week. Our inductee this week was inducted in the year 2000 in the category of Great Westerner. You might have seen his grandson, Larry Schnell, on the program uh, a while back talking about Stockman's livestock. Ray Schnell Sr. wore many hats over many years, but I guarantee that every one of those hats was cowboy. He served in the North Dakota legislature. He served as our state's lieutenant governor. And he started the uh, Dickinson Livestock Sales Company, which later became Schnell Livestock, which we know today as Stockman's Livestock. Get to know our 2000 Hall of Honoree inductee in the category of Great Westerner, Ray Schnell Sr., our inductee of the week. The next and final honoree goes into a relatively new induction category, perhaps reserved for the best of the best. We've heard references not only today, not only the last couple years of the Cowboy Hall of Fame, but certainly for many, many decades about this next individual. If we hear anything about the Schnell family, he was a big part of it. Right now, it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. Bob Schnell, who will provide the introduction for this year's Great Westerner Honoree. Thank you, and I do want to say that <clears throat> I'm 
very proud to be able to speak on behalf of Ray now. Ray was born in 1893 to immigrant parents that homesteaded near Richardson, North Dakota. He married in 1918 to a Norwegian school teacher from Minnesota that came out to teach in western North Dakota. And he always said that <clears throat> that was the smartest move that he ever made. In 1924, Ray started a lifelong career as an auctioneer. He sold a lot of sales during the 1930s, and they were closeout sales, they were foreclosure sales, they were heartbreaking sales. And I, and I know that many times he, he absolutely would not accept an auctioneer's fee for selling those sales. You know, people like to go to sales that, that Ray Schnell sold. I think you all know that he had a great sense of humor. They came to those sales to be informed and entertained. And of course, he was a great salesman and became what was probably the most prominent auctioneer in the state of North Dakota. One of the early things that, that he perceived and, and saw on the horizon and an indication of his foresight, there was a lack of a good marketing program for cattlemen, not only in North Dakota, but throughout America. And as a result, he was one of the founders of the Dickinson Livestock Sales, really the first volume market in the state of North Dakota. I think there was maybe one other auction market started a year or so before that. <coughs> but it was formed in, in 1937. And you know, I was only seven years old when that first sale was held, <coughs> but I can vividly remember just what went on. They bought the old fairgrounds, the old Stark County fairgrounds, the big old barn, and they put a woven wire fence around the west side of it so they could facilitate the movement of cattle. And my older brothers, Raymond and Howard and Willard, moved the cattle in and out of the ring, and of course Ray was the auctioneer. And uh, my older sisters, my mother, they ran the office. And of course the office was <coughs> a couple of two by 12 planks across a double horse stall. Pretty humble beginnings. Raymond tells me that there was probably about 40 head of cattle and maybe a total receipts of about $5,000 in that first sale. But things grew. It was a family operated operation and you compare it to the market now at Stockman's where they'll sell as many as four or 5,000 head a week that are valued at somewhere that today's price is around $2 million. So pretty humble beginning that grew into North Dakota's li uh, li largest livestock market. One of Ray Schnell's highest priorities on his agenda in his marketing years and his early years was to improve the cattle especially in his trade territory. And to do that, he sponsored stock shows and sales. He paid prize money for, for good cattle. He judged shows throughout America. He bought a lot of bulls from breeders throughout the country and shipped them back here and sold them to ranchers in this area for cattle improvement. In fact, there were several years when <coughs> Ray owned and sold more purebred bulls than any other person in America. There was a rather unorthodox method of herd improvement that was employed, and some of you older people might remember that. <coughs> when we built the new sale pavilion in Dickinson in 1947, among the prizes that were awarded was prizes for the three poorest bulls that came to the sale. Now that's pretty, um, you just wonder about that and then you, you think about the publicity that that might have gathered and know the, the consigner's name was not given and there was a catch to it. He had to take that money and invest it in a purebred bull. And think about that for a minute and you can think of all the inferior bulls that were weeded out of the country. Ray Schnell was, 
was a horseman. He was born and raised in a horse family, and he spent a lifetime owning and raising good horses. And I can remember back in the 30s when we had some government remount stallions from Fort Robinson, and we raised horses for the cavalry. And I can remember uh, the cavalry when they came to pick their horses. Later on, we had paints and palominos. And then after World War II, uh, he went to Albert Mitchell's ranch in New Mexico and selected a couple of crops of uh, Philly colts. And he became one of the very first and probably the largest quarter horse breeder <coughs> in the state of North Dakota. Along with the horses, Ray always had a deep involvement in rodeo and it dated back to his early days as a rancher in Richards, North Dakota where they sponsored rodeos. And of course it was culminated with the match of champions <coughs> in Dickinson and later on of course here at Home in the Range for Boys. And that was kind of his brainchild. He started that in the 1950s and it was mentioned previously here today rodeo fans from 10 states and Canada would tell you that that was probably the greatest <coughs> greatest rodeo they've ever seen. And it kind of reminds me of the story that they tell at that time. I don't know if it's true or not. But in Dickinson there was a, an old fella died that he was about the worst kind of a, a person you could imagine. He was dishonest. He was sloppy. He was a cheat. He, uh, he was a drunk. Just about every bad attribute you could place on a man um, was that particular person. Didn't have many friends. But he died and they had to bury him. He belonged to this particular church. And the, they were conducting the service and the, and the preacher that was to deliver the eulogy, absolutely speechless. And finally in desperation, he said to the congregation, would any of the members of the congregation wish to say a word about our departed? And there was dead silence, dead silence in the church. And finally, Ray Snell was in the back of the church and he jumped up and he says, well, Reverend, if you're not gonna talk about him, I wanna tell you about the Cowboy Hall of Fame. <laughs> and the Dallas Morning News, in an interview with my father, um, <clears throat> were pretty impressed when he said that, that a ranch is the very best place to raise children. And they quoted him in, when he said that no boy or girl is going to go astray. That follows the path of a horse. About 30 years before that, Will Rogers said that, um, he said, really, he said, there must be something really wrong with a man that doesn't like a horse. And I'll tell you what, my father liked horses. <clears throat> you know, they, some people compared Ray Schnell with Will Rogers in many respects. They even looked alike. You notice their pictures, they, they did look somewhat alike. In 1963, he was named the man of the year in North Dakota agriculture. In 1965, he was named the Stockman of the Year in America at the National Western Stock Show in Denver. And you know, being from a, an immigrant family and of course uh, settlers uh, that were impressed with the freedoms and the opportunities that presented themselves in this great land. And he had a political philosophy that if you live and raise a family in this country, you ought to take an interest in your government. And he did take a vital interest in government, and he served six terms in the North Dakota legislature. He was elected lieutenant governor <coughs> in 1951. You know, with, uh, with 13 children in the family that were born to Ray and Clara Snell, you know, many of us grew up in the drought and the depression years of the 1930s, but I would say that we were taught the virtues of hard work and the dignity of manual labor, and I'll guarantee you we had to work. There was no other way around. But I would say also that he provided all of us <coughs> with an education and the inspiration to succeed in whatever endeavor we engaged in. 
in a, in a telegram that was sent to my mother upon the occasion of um, my father's funeral in 1970, United States Senator Milton R. Young said, and I quote, Ray was one of the greatest citizens North Dakota ever produced. He richly deserves the nationwide recognition he received in so many fields. In my lifetime experience, my father, Ray Schnell, was the most decent man I ever knew. Thank you. The Schnell family is a fixture here at the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame. Ray's son, Willard, is also an inductee here at the Hall of Honorees. And uh, grandson, Larry, a fixture as well. He lends his skills as an auctioneer to various events that we hold each year. And he's always a fixture at the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame golf scramble each and every September. In fact, this year, he won a grill. <laughs> the Schnell family, they're well-deserved taking their place in the Hall of Honorees here at the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame. And our inductee of the week is brought to you by Torgerson Auto Center on East Bismarck Expressway in Bismarck. We've got one final segment to go, and when we return, we will present to you this week's Dakota Cowboy Student Rodeo Athlete of the Week. Don't move. This is Dakota Cowboy presented by Dakota Community Bank and Trust, and we'll be back in just a moment. Hey, we're looking for ideas for our next commercial. Stock? We have a fully stocked lot. Cars, trucks, SUVs? Clearly. We strive for honesty, transparency, and a better buying experience. Of course we do. Guys, think, everybody's busy. Nobody has time to spend hours shopping for a car. It has to be simple, easy. Sales, service, simplified. Perfect. Torgerson Auto Center, East Bismarck Expressway. Sales, service, simplified. Unique gifts, an assortment of beautiful jewelry, and much more can be found at Dakota Territory Jewelry and Gifts in Medora. Montana silver necklaces and earrings, Black Hills gold and sterling silver jewelry, many Native American made pieces too, and a selection of art pieces. They carry healthy products made right here in North Dakota, and to satisfy your sweet tooth, fall in love with the best fudge around and the freshest taffy made right in the store. Buy it by the pound in a variety of flavors. Dakota Territory Jewelry and Gifts in historic Medora. Wild Bill here for Stephenson Selinger Chiropractic of Dickinson. Recently, I tore my meniscus, and after an MRI, doctors gave me three options. Prescription meds, reoccurring injections, or surgery, which wasn't guaranteed to rid me of the pain. Then someone suggested I try soft wave therapy. Stephenson Selinger Chiropractic of Dickinson are skilled in this innovative treatment. After a few treatments, my pain went from an 8 down to a 1. See if soft wave therapy is right for you. Contact Stephenson Selinger Chiropractic today. Medora Boot and Western Wear open year-round in historic Medora. You'll find quality items for cowboys and cowgirls of all ages. Medora Boot and Western Wear has over 1,500 pair of boots on hand at all times. New this year, the R. Watson brand of boot featuring an all-leather heel, riveted shank, and a 10-iron leather sole. Jeans, shirts, hats, caps, and more, and customer service is number one. Medora Boot and Western Wear in historic Medora. Medora Boot and Western Wear. Hi, my name is Jeff Gould. I have a story called America's Story. I'm going to be doing it Valley City on October 20th. It's the East Greets West North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame fundraiser, and I hope you can make it. It's going to be a great time. We'll begin at 5 p.m. on October 20th with a social dinner and a lively auction right after Jeff Gould presents America's Story. Tickets available now at NorthDakotaCowboy.org. East Greets West with the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame October 20th at the Valley City North Dakota Eagles Club. Brad Germanson Extreme Bronc Riding, the greatest bronc riding event ever, is coming to Four Bears. Join us for two days of unparalleled action and excitement in this PRCA-sanctioned event, October 6th and 7th. After each night of bronc action, there will be free live entertainment in the Pocket Aces Lounge. And don't forget to visit the Four Bears Sportsbook, where you can place bets on all the action. Tickets on sale now at fourbearscasino.com or purchase at the gate. Extreme Bronc Riding and Sportsbook Betting at Four Bears. Securian Financial Advisors of North Dakota is now Lux Wealth Advisors. In our current climate, planning for retirement can be scary. Let the experienced advisors at Lux Wealth Advisors take the worry out of wealth planning. 
Lux Wealth Advisors can work with anyone. From those looking to invest their first dollar to those transitioning into retirement, let Lux Wealth Advisors be your guide. Lux Wealth Advisors, new name, same great service. Welcome back to Dakota Cowboy here on Beck TV, presented by Dakota Community Bank and Trust. Earlier in the program, you met Sutton Hennessy when Tisa visited with him at the State Fair. He was showing cattle. Now we'll see the rodeo side of Sutton Hennessy as he is this week's Dakota Cowboy Student Rodeo Athlete of the Week. Our Dakota Cowboy Student Rodeo Athlete of the Week this week is 16-year-old Sutton Hennessy, a deluxe Burlington sophomore. He's the son of proud parents Jay and Karen Hennessy of Berthold. He was featured in an interview with Tisa Peak here on Dakota Cowboy. Sutton brought home a championship buckle in team roping at the Watford City High School Rodeo as a header for Holden Meyer. But his favorite event is steer wrestling. As a champion high school steer wrestler, he was awarded the Levi Wisness Traveling Trophy, a highly coveted award. It has been given to the steer wrestling champion every year since 2000. 2008 in honor of steer wrestler Levi Wisness, a 2021 North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame inductee who died at the young age of 27. Sutton has had some treacherous wrecks in the arena, but bounced back with a vengeance and took home a first place go-round win at the latest MHA Nation Rodeo Finals. Sutton stated that he is proud to be a part of the North Dakota High School Rodeo Association because it is just a great group of people and he loves that everyone is supportive toward each other. Sutton Hennessy, our Dakota Cowboy student rodeo athlete of the week. Congratulations Sutton on being this week's Dakota Cowboy Student Rodeo Athlete of the Week. And if you, the viewer, would like to nominate somebody for the Student Rodeo Athlete of the Week, send an email to dakotacowboy at becknews.com. Include some photos, also some video clips of them in action, and a biography of the potential Dakota Cowboy Student Rodeo Athlete of the Week. Again, that's dakotacowboy at becknews.com. On behalf of Tisa Peak, I'm Wild Bill. Thank you for watching this episode. We greatly appreciate it. We'll work hard on putting a new one together for you, and we'll get it on next week here on Dakota Cowboy, presented by Dakota Community Bank and Trust. We will see you in the future, if not in the pasture. Adios. Brad Germanson Extreme Bronc Riding, the greatest bronc riding event ever, is coming to Four Bears. Join us for two days of unparalleled action and excitement in this PRCA sanctioned event, October 6th and 7th. After each night of bronc action, there will be free live entertainment in the Pocket Aces Lounge. And don't forget to visit the Four Bears Sportsbook, where you can place bets on all the action. Tickets on sale now at fourbearscasino.com or purchase at the gate. Extreme bronc riding and sportsbook betting at Four Bears. We are rewriting Hollywood script for our kids. I'm pop culture expert Tina Griffin, and as a former Hollywood actress, I'm giving you a behind-the-scenes look at how today's entertainment is eroding the foundational development of America's youth and how to safely navigate this pop culture chaos. Knowledge is power. Parents want solutions. It's time to get the power back in your hands and reclaim the right to decide who and what should influence your kids. Weekdays at 2 p.m. Central Time on Back TV. Hey y'all, it's Trent on the loose. I'm a sixth generation farmer, husband, patriot, father. And as much as I'd love to just sit here under this shade tree and celebrate my own place on my front porch, truth of the matter is that people don't know who, where, and how is producing their food. So travel the country with Trent on the loose and we'll find those interesting human interest stories behind the people that bring us the efficient food supply. Trent on the loose. We're the ladies of another view. Join us at 9 a.m. weekday mornings. We'll discuss issues you care about from local and national perspectives. You'll hear unique stories from fellow North Dakotans plus topics in the national spotlight. Start your day off right with ladies of another view. Weekdays at 9 a.m. on Beck TV and online at beck.news.